permission of the House to do so. Um, so welcome, and Claire is going to introduce Robin, but um, she is the CEO of Optime and has done a huge amount of work for health and safety, and so we are asking permission from the House that she has permission to speak. So all those in favour, please say aye. Aye. No, Carrie. Thank you. Thank you, Archdeacon Carol. My name is Claire Barry, and as a member of Diocesan Council and the newly formed Health and Safety Committee, um, it's a pleasure to introduce Robin to you. Um, with the new health and safety legislation in place, we've been very uh, aware of our responsibility as a body um, to look after health and safety um, across you know, a very complex diocese with complex needs. Robin has over 20 years of professional experience in this area in the corporate and non-profit sector and is very generously offering her time and her expertise to the diocese, to all of us, um, to help us as we seek to develop a health and safety culture um, across our whole community. So thank you, Robin, for giving up time with your family this morning to be with us. Thank you, Claire. Uh, good morning, Archdeacon Carol and members of Synod. Um, it's an honour for you to ask me to come and speak on my very exciting uh, industry that I work in, which is health and safety. Um, what I hope to do this morning is give you some clarity around where we are two years on from our new legislation and hopefully um, change the focus a little bit somewhat from what New Zealand as a whole has been focusing on over the last two years. So we're two years on now from our new legislation and what we have been doing over the last two years is having a very long, lovely debate about two things mainly, the term officer and the term PCBU, which you've probably all heard about. Um, what we haven't done is um, been focusing where we really need to focus, and that's on our workplace deaths and what's going on there. In the last two months, we've had another six workplace deaths in New Zealand, and WorkSafe itself and the industry leaders have recently got together over the last months and changed tact a bit um, and try to bring the focus back to where we should have it. Um, this in turn has changed a little bit around getting our focus away from our definitions and around what we need to really be working together on. Um, I've been asked and been working with your working party to do exactly that and hopefully get us back to a consistent path together. When we are looking at the roles, and I will cover this off very quickly because it has been some debate in the working party as we've been working through this, is to give some clarity to you. There are four <coughs> main roles that WorkSafe deem under the new Act. Those roles haven't changed from the old Act. So just to be clear on the differences, everything that's been stated in the old Act still sits in the new Act. So our responsibilities, our role and our duties haven't changed at all. Only some terms and some definitions have changed. So we have businesses, we have leaders, we have workers and we have others. So the biggest change under our new Act is under the term workers. And as you can see there, if we're putting this in context of your business or your industry and where you're sitting, we have the diocese and we have the ministry units themselves acting as business units. Those that are leading those groups would be acting as senior leaders. So this would be clergy, press in charge and vicars, and council members. So they would have a duty to be an act as a role of a senior leader. The change that we've had under the uh, workers um, is definitely under the term of volunteers. So that's going to actually be more relevant to you than senior leaders and getting those definitions right. So we've got workers, anybody who's a contractor coming in doing gardening or any work of any sort, whether they're volunteered or whether they're paid, is considered a worker. So we must treat them the same as we would a general employee or any other worker. So all your volunteers that would be going away from your ministry units into the community to do any work would be considered a worker as well. So if we can just go back, sorry, one slide. So if we're putting that in context of PCBU, an officer, just to be really clear, and this is a general term, 
the diocese and the ministry units themselves will be classed as a PCBU. They are a business acting as a whole, and together we are a business. So that's very, very important to remember, that we all take that role on. And the senior leaders would be considered officers. So if we now go to the next slide. Um, it becomes more relevant when we're looking at what we're doing together. So the big focus in WorkSafe at the moment is very much not about what those roles and what the due diligence requirements are. It's very much around how do we work together? How do we work smarter? So the easiest way to do that is to look at more of a governance structure where we have a working party who's acting on behalf of the council and supporting the consultation and communication process between the ministry units. So the role then becomes a little bit more transparent and a little bit more flowing backwards and forwards between you. So the ministry units aren't solely responsible for having to run out, create their own plans, create their own systems, and implement their own safety. What we can do is through that working group is create one plan that we all use, which is much easier and much simpler, that we all consult to. That we have one way of working and we start to focus on what are those real high level areas that we want to focus on? And how do we actually mitigate and how do we manage those risks as a group, as a whole? This will save a lot of you a lot of time and effort and hopefully eliminate some of the pain that you must be going through with this. So the big, big focus at the moment is pulling away from those definitions and really focusing on where we want to focus on. And health and safety, the crux of health, health and safety is purely on our risks, knowing what those are and then knowing how to manage them and address them properly. And when I go into any business, and, and similar with yours and looking at the way that you're structured, is what we want to do is focus and identify what are those top five risks. And with those top five risks, what is, what is relevant to focus on and what is appropriate in terms of how we control those risks? Um, we have a lot of people at the moment that are running off on tangents and doing all sorts of things and stopping work and spending lots of money just to manage a risk. We don't want to do that. So what WorkSafe really focuses on is maintaining your normal daily activities without impact on resource and time as much as possible and cost, but still being aware of what those are. So your top five risks, we've had quite a bit of debate in, in the working group around what those risks are. What we've done is position those risks in terms of what we consider high, medium and low risk within WorkSafe as an industry as a whole. Fire's always going to be the highest in combination with electrical. So within your um, buildings, within your structures, you've got both of these combinations happening. So um, that's a fairly obvious one. The third one that really sits quite high up on the risk is events. So lots of others, and that's where that term others comes into play. You've got people who don't fit under the workers category, but you've got a lot of others. So um, elderly patrons, also children, any, work, any groups that are coming onto your premises to undertake an event of any sort and activities. Um, and the risk, the harm that's going to occur to them is fairly low, so it usually fits under the slips and trips. But the reason that we class it high is because the numbers are there. There's a lot of numbers. The fourth risk there is contractors. So that's anyone from maintenance coming on board, painters, gardeners, anyone doing any work whatsoever, whether they're a volunteer or not. And the last one, which I think we're all aware of, is stress and fatigue, um, which will be occurring for everybody throughout the year at certain times. It'll be more prevalent at certain times throughout the year. And stress and fatigue comes from a number of different areas for you as, as a group. It's coming from the work and the time that you're putting in yourselves, but it's also coming from the people that you're engaging with as well within the community. 
So where are we at to date with the working group? We've made some big headway. What we are doing to, going to do is, is pull together and hopefully deliver a more consistent, consolidated approach that everybody can follow. We have formed the group so far and it's operating extremely well. We have completed a health and safety plan that's yet, yet to come out to be consulted on. The next steps is to focus purely on those five risks and to be able to put a very short, simple guide together that we can send out to all of you with a little bit of a self-assessment checklist that says this is the minimum standard that you should have in place for each of those five risks. And from there, we can start to form a health and safety plan moving forward. Um, and the new law is very, very clear in that it states as long as we are on a path of a continual improvement, so as long as we're on the journey, we're considered compliant. So in your industry, putting it in perspective, you're at the low risk sector. So we can actually relax and actually just focus purely on where those risks are at the moment and move forward. So just leaving you with that, what we really need to be focusing on is um, the risks and how we manage those and move away from those definitions of officer and PCBU because they don't tend to fit very clearly in your situation and a lot of others that I'm coming across. So if we all actually participate, support the working group and what they're doing and filter into that, then we'll have a consistent path moving forward. So I hope that clarifies everything for you. Are we asking questions? Thank you, Robin. What I thought we might do now is um, get into small groups and have a conversation and then come back with some questions, which will include the whole report. Is that okay with you? And so you'll be able to stay for a little bit longer? Thank you. Just want to thank you on behalf of all of us for all the work that you have offered, um, your expertise and giving the gift of your time as well. So thank you so much for being here today. I also want to thank Dyson Council for their presentation. Just before we get going, to clarify that the quota presentation will be happening. We haven't left it out on purpose, but it will be happening uh, when we come to the bill. So we haven't mentioned that as part of this report. Also to clarify that what I'm asking of you now is for individuals, if you have a question that hasn't been answered amongst your group, and you find that it will be helpful for the whole group to hear, that you can't necessarily do it behind the scenes, so to speak, I invite you to come up and ask your question, and then one of the members of Dyson Council will answer it. Just to be clear, I'm not asking for feedback from your group conversation. I'm asking for if there's any questions that we all would benefit to hear the response to that individuals come up and ask those questions. So, any questions? Thank you, Liang. members of Synod. I want to thank the uh, Diocesan Council for their presentation. Particularly I want to thank Robin and for the work that's been happening with respect to the health and safety. I'm sure our parish has not been unusual in the amount of angst that there has been around trying to put together some understanding and some processes in order to keep our people safe. Um, Robin <laughs> made mention of the fact that there is a process happening whereby some standard plans, some standard assessment things will be brought forward. What I want to understand is, does that mean at some point we will have to change or ditch any of the work that we have all been doing in trying to get things together? We've been very blessed to have someone who absolutely loves health and safety and works in it come into our parish and she's just taken the stress out of it all so much but I'm just hopeful that we then won't have to ditch everything we've already done because diocesan council presents us with
plans and assessments and systems that we must use. Thank you, it's a very good question. Um, absolutely no, you don't ditch what you already have. Um, what the working group is seeking to do is just to create a model for moving forward and also to create a pivotal area or a central point where we can flow some of that good work backwards and forwards. And just to be able to put a minimum standard. So when we say a little bit of a, a guide that we'll send out and perhaps in self-assessment, it'll be as simple as, for example, if we're talking about fire, it would be do you undertake regular fire drills in your building? You should do these at least six, every six months. Do you have your fire extinguishers checked? And there might be an opportunity there if there's a lot of no's that actually we can negotiate um, a provider to do that on your behalf. But if you already have your systems in place, absolutely keep using them. This is fantastic. Um, and moving forward, when we're moving away from some of those bigger risks, it might be advantageous to be able to work together a little bit on some of the other things. Um, even more beneficial is that if you've got really good work, this is going to create an opportunity where we can actually share that with others, um, which will save everybody else some work. <laughs> so we might come and have a chat to you about what you've been doing yourselves. <laughs> I hope that answers your question. Thank you, Robin. Robin, for your work and the work of the Health and Safety Committee. We're just wondering about timelines. You said you had a plan that hasn't yet come out to ministry units, and we'd just love to know kind of what timeline you're working on for rolling this stuff out. Thank you. Yes, the timeline's important. So bringing it back in perspective again, when we're looking at your risks and what you're faced with, Again, keeping in perspective that you're sitting in a low-risk industry sector. So what we've planned is over the next year to 18 months that the focus will be on those top five risks and working together um, on each one of those. So in terms of the safety plan that's been drafted now and the next steps over the next month to two months, will to communicate that out to all of you so that you can see that timeline more clearly. Um, and ask for your feedback and your consultation. So this is your opportunity to feedback what you are doing and all the great work that you are doing, some of you in your areas, that we can take that on board. Also, what it does is creates an opportunity that you can look at that and, for example, if you're not doing much around your contractor management or your events, is to hold off a little while because you will start to see some information that may be very useful for you. So again, those top five risks, we hope that in the next 12 to 18 months that you'll have some good guides come out around that um, and a little bit of an easy, simple to use checklist to check that you are on track with managing those risks and doing what you should be doing. Look at it 
in a PIZ right oh, we can be hot pitiful to people with disabilities. Thank you, Vicky. Have we got a response at all? Thank you. Thank you. Um, I was, there's a number of things in there which is very, very important. Um, definitely working with disabilities, again, is absolutely um, really at the core and is mentioned quite a lot within our health and safety. Um, and it's very much around, um, again, which is um, <coughs> works very much within your own culture, is about being inclusive and working together as a team. And what we have to do when we're looking at health and safety in any area, so if I go back to those risks again, it's taking in consideration all types of people. Um, and no matter what the disability is or um, <coughs> whether there's an impairment, we have to consider that with the way that we manage the risks. So when we're looking at things, if we bring that back to looking at um, managing fire, if you're looking at your assembly points outside and your fire evacuation routes, it's thinking in terms of the people that are visiting you, the people that you may be having to engage with, and actually taking that into consideration as a whole. So you're absolutely right. It has to be a consideration always, um, because it usually it's not a risk, absolutely not a risk at all. It's not what I term a risk, it's what I term under those four roles as being workers or others, as simply as that. But what we have to do is make sure that the way that we manage it, make sure that everybody can get out safely, is safe, and that we're thinking about that. On the opposite hand, what we do have to do is when you're going into the community, is to have consideration for others who may be dis have a disability that are sitting in the community. And that not, might mean that you have to change the way that you would normally do some of your own practices or processes. But again, two things, keeping yourself safe and keeping others themselves safe too. I hope that answers it. Um, we might need to chat about it a little bit more to have a consideration there. Stephen Carroll, um, Dice and Council, members of Synod, Colleen Bins, uh, Papua Mission District. I'm sure we're not the only ones that face what I'm going to say, but it, I'm also going to email it to keep safe and the rest of the email address, which I'm aware of, but haven't got around to doing it. We have two, uh, have had two struggles with health and safety, and um, one is minor, and that's the fact that our buildings are not, um, there's not someone in them all the time, and one has a internet relay thing on the roof, and the owners of that come occasionally to adjust it and clean it and what have you, without telling us. I was there one day when he came and I said, now you know you've got to have a safety harness on. Yep, he whipped it round his waist, but there was nothing to hook it on on the roof, so he says, well, I've got it on. <laughs> how, do we, how do we control that? The, the, the one that has called it, caused us the most um, heartache, is digging of graves. Um, we have two grave diggers, one who does it manually and one who does it with a mini digger, but we also still live in a community where families like to dig the, their own grave for a deceased member. And um, this is, is, has been causing us some angst and we're We've been trying to get our head around it. Um, yeah, I'll email it, okay. <coughs> Great questions. I was wondering when the challenge would come. <laughs> um, the first one, I do specialise in telecommunications, so I can tell you that that chat with the harness is not doing the right thing. 
Um, and because it is your, if you like, you're taking ownership of that property, you absolutely can stop him from doing what he's doing. And that will impact what he's doing, I can tell you that, because he's on a, a very strict um, roster to do what he needs to do. So again, what it's doing is just raising those standards and giving that feedback to that individual to say, look, I'm not happy with what you're doing. I don't think it's safe. I'm not going to allow you to do it unless you can show me how you're going to do it and explain the right way. Um, so yes, start to actually push back a little bit there. They know what they should be doing wearing harnesses. So um, <laughs> very, very good job for actually recognising that. Um, the second one, is a little bit more tricky. Um, now, yes, there is an issue there because we don't want to be placing others that comes into the others category who are doing activities that could cause them strain um, or could, could cause them harm on your place. What I would suggest is, is um, a balance there of perspective where we don't want to stop them from taking part in that activity, which is very important for them. But what you can do is actually provide one of your team alongside them to support them. Um, and again, it's around having conversations and making people aware. So again, before they're doing that, to explain as part of your health and safety and part of your practices, this, this is what we have set up and this is the way that we do this and these are the reasons why. Um, we don't want to stop you from not taking part in the bereavement process, but we would like to join you and be able to support you with it and hopefully then encourage them to not do as much digging as what your team could do. Does that help? Um, I just want to say that one of the reasons is that um, also financial, the cost of having someone there to, who's experienced in digging is getting more and more costly and for families particularly in Northland that's sometimes prohibitive. So. But I will leave them as well. Yeah, um, the, the real crux of this is not so much who is doing the digging, it's actually the way that they're doing it. So um, absolutely, this is fantastic to, for us to take back to the working party and put it on our agenda to have a discussion about, and that might be the next guide that we bring out, is how to dig, not who's going to dig. Um, so you can see how the working party is going to work. <laughs> Um, so I think that's a really good point, is we'll take that back, put that on the agenda and look at um, a way in which we can make this a little bit safer for anybody to be able to undertake that operation. Thank you Robin, and I appreciate that uh, there are some questions and issues around health and safety and that the diocese is here to support you and certainly having Robin here this morning has been fantastic, thank you. So uh, be reassured that you're not alone in terms of you know, some of the questions on the issues and there is a working group that is working for you and with you so uh, thank you for that. I don't see anyone else coming up for questions so I will close that session.